This is Akashwani. In the program spotlight, now we bring you an interview with Amit Prothi, Director General of Coalition for Disaster Resilient Infrastructure, CDRI. The interviewer is Diksha Saxena, Akashwani correspondent. Coalition for Disaster Resilient Infrastructure was launched in 2019 by Prime Minister Narendra Modi at UN Climate Action Summit in New York. Welcome Mr. Prothi. Thank you so much for having me today. Before I get into nitty-gritty, first of all I would like to ask you, what is CDRI? So CDRI is a coalition of countries and other members who are interested to do something to improve infrastructure from a disaster resident point of view. So we have 31 countries who are members. India is the founding member. So CDRI has basically launched about like you said 2019. We are essentially trying to establish the importance of the agenda on the global space. So we are an organization focused on capacity building. We are an organization focused on technical assistance and the importance of infrastructure because when you think about disasters, we see images of what happens. We see images of buildings collapsing, bridges collapsing, roads getting washed away. When infrastructure fails, an event like an earthquake or an event like a cyclone becomes a disaster because people don't have services that they need during those times. CDRI has been set up essentially to focus on these issues and influence how we build and rebuild infrastructure in the future. Disasters are not new, but yes, in past 20 years, the world has been witnessing almost double the number of earthquakes, which is a natural phenomena, and droughts. And all other major disasters have also increased significantly in past 20, 22 years. Was the infrastructure not resilient then to the disasters? And what was the need to emphasize so much on infrastructure like establishing CDRI? Are disasters increasing? Yes. Now, not are phenomena increasing? Yes. And I want to make that distinction. An earthquake is a natural phenomena. We've had earthquakes forever. We are seeing more damage now because we are also building a lot more. You know, our populations are increasing, our cities are getting bigger. The amount of infrastructure we've built in the last 50 years has not been ever done before. So the scale of our infrastructure, our cities, etc., is increasing. So a natural phenomena like an earthquake, the potential for damage is much more, and we're seeing that. Now, part of that story is also what's happening because of climate change. We have now seen, even this year, if you look at what's happening around the world, hottest in July, global temperatures are increasing. So on average, the earth is much warmer, 1.1 degrees warmer than it was in pre-industrial times. That has a relationship to how uh, cyclonic patterns are. That has a relationship to how precipitation patterns are changing. That has definitely seen an increase even in the last 20 years. So cyclonic patterns have changed. So we're seeing floods, for example, so the increase in the disaster, both related to more building that's happening, but also from a climate change point of view, the phenomena are changing. Why focus on infrastructure? So in the past 20 plus whatever years, a lot of our focus has been how do we respond when there's a disaster? An event like an earthquake doesn't need to become a disaster. So that's really the emphasis of now starting to focus more on disaster. The whole area of work is called disaster risk reduction. For CDRI, that focus in, is on the infrastructure space. So how do you reduce risks to infrastructure during an earthquake, during a cyclone, so that the infrastructure doesn't fail? India is trying to take a lead uh, when it comes to dealing with climate change and disaster resilience matters. Food for thought is, why India and why in 2019? Like, the world has been facing disasters for so many years now. But why is India trying to take that lead and why did no other country come forward to protect the environment and the globe from this? Different countries have had different agendas. A lot of countries have been focused on the humanitarian aspect of disaster, the post-disaster helping people. That has always been there. For India, I mean, I think, a few things to reflect on. You know, one, we had a major tsunami in 2004, which affected India and a lot of countries around the Indian Ocean area, right? We had the Uttarkashi earthquake in the early 90s. We had the Bhuj earthquake. We now have leadership. Our prime minister was the chief minister 
immediately in the post after Bhuj earthquake. So he was very much involved in the reconstruction of Gujarat after an earthquake. So he's got first-hand experience to see the speed at which decisions have to be made, the amount of sort of rebuilding that is needed, the human side of, you know, how do you make sure that people who've lost their house, their livelihoods, how do you give them something back immediately, quickly to get back on their feet? You know, when you think about India right now, we are still on a pathway of building. There's lots to be built. So how do we try to now introduce into the building aspect, aspects of resilience, so that what we're building today doesn't again fall down tomorrow if there's an earthquake or there's a cyclone. So I think the leadership is coming both from experience. One of the key focus areas of CDRI is also on the power sector. There are many focus areas, but I would like to bring your focus on the power sector. Building resilient power infrastructure is also important. Can you please elaborate on this very aspect? So for CDRI, when we look at, when we say infrastructure, we look at what is something called critical infrastructure. So what is critical that needs to function if there's an earthquake, if there's a cyclone, if there's a flood? All of us rely on the power sector. If you think about it, right, everything from charging your cell phone to the electricity in your house to communication, everything is reliant on the power sector. So for CDRI, what we decided is like, when you think about power sector, there are enough examples around the world when power sector failed, an event became a disaster. So we basically have said, okay, let's take a look at the power sector. Let's look at what aspects need to be thought about if there is, you know, resilience to be built in this system. So I'll give you an example. In the state of Odisha, we all know it's, Odisha gets a lot of cyclones. Now, because of climate change, cyclonic patterns are changing. Are wind speeds changing? Are we going to expect higher winds now in the future than what we've experienced in the past? And then trying to understand, is the electricity grid, the, is the electricity, the uh, transmission lines, your cables that transmit electricity, is all of that built to withstand higher speeds if we'll expect higher speeds? So it's a combination of understanding the risk. So that's the whole focus on the science behind climate change and changing winds. And then combining that with the hard infrastructure to understand, is that infrastructure ready to be able to withstand those changing speeds? In fact, as I'd already mentioned, there are many key focus areas. But the other one is uh, working on building a disaster resilient transport sector, which has main focus on airports and seaports. Why is disaster resilient infrastructure so important for airports and seaports? You know, again, like I said, CDRI is focused on critical infrastructure. So what we're looking at is power, which already talked about. We're looking at telecommunication and we're looking at transportation. In the transportation space, we've said, let's take a look at first airports to begin with. And now we're starting to look at seaports. Now, airports provide a very critical function in connecting people. You know, all of us use air flights to go around. Airports are incredibly important for supply chains. So sometimes some of the most remote places are only connected by an airport. So we have understood that as a key node in connectivity across the world. Within India, with outside of India, I saw this personally in Kathmandu. You know, I was there, actually happened to be there during the earthquake of 2015. And Kathmandu being remote, not very well connected, when the earthquake hit, the airport runway also got affected. And for, I think, two or three days, no flight could come in. For us, what we've said is we looked at about 111 airports around the world. And we said, how are you? So this was a survey of these airports to understand how are they looking at the issue of risk from a variety of flooding, if there's a cyclone, what do they do? Do they actually, you know, shut down and then shut down service? Do they have contingency plans? Are they thinking about if they get flooded? Can they quickly rebound? So what is the whole aspect of resilience for airports? We've tried to understand that, based on which we are now saying we will be coming out with some guidance. These are the kinds of things airports should be doing when they're facing, either it's before a sort of event, so when you're building an airport, what should we be looking out for? And then when you've already built an airport and you're expecting some kind of a phenomena, how do you act? Infrastructure for resilient island states has been spotlight since its launch at COP26 in 2021. Can you explain how was this idea of IRIS conceived and what are the plans for future? Because we are a global organization and because we want to actually influence how infrastructure is built across the world, we've done some diagnostics to understand which parts of the world are at high risk from disasters. When you look at small island development states, 
these are small economies in general. These are you know, very small places where the risk, and they're at high risk. So you look at the Pacific Island and you'll see, you know, examples of a volcano and earthquake and a flood happening on the same island in the same year. Now, all of this has a huge impact on these island states. And when you think about who's most vulnerable, what place is most vulnerable, island states stand out. You know, sometimes they lose up to 10 to 15 percent of their GDP because of a disaster. So we said, let's do something to support these island states. Established in 2019, CDRI now has 40 members. Currently, the focus is on meeting requirements in disaster-prone South Pacific island states. It is learned that CDRI will also include Africa in its ambit. Mm -hmm. And I believe Prime Minister is pushing hard for it. So, in your view, how important it is in the current global order, the safety and security of the African continent? It's very important. I mean, because where CDRI's focus, we bring, I think Global South is a word that gets used a lot. So, we are an organization, of course, set up in India. We are bringing solutions for resource constraint environments, constraint locations. We are also, from our own perspective, focused on, because we are building so much infrastructure, how do we make that resilient? And when you look around the globe, where, which parts of the world are similar in terms of, you know, Africa, there's a lot of infrastructure being built, there is a higher amount of vulnerability, and there's a strong need for solutions that are, you know, effectively resource efficient and innovative. We are still a very new organization. We're only four years old. We're still trying to think through what is the strategy of our engagement in Africa, but it's been identified as definitely one of the areas we want to expand in with membership. It has been seen from past many years that the urban infrastructure is and it, it is always at risk to disasters. Not just the urban, it is very topical currently when I discuss this with you. You have seen the amount of damage which Himachal Pradesh and Uttarakhand has been facing because of the incessant rains. In your view, how can these disasters be tackled and what are the steps that are being taken to prevent these things in future? We are in the process of designing an urban program. So we will be providing support in two cities to address risk. When we build... Have we understood where are we building? You know, are we building in places that are prone to flooding in any case? Where in cities one needs to avoid building? Or if we are going to build there, what kind of, whether it's codes, whether it's regulations, whether it's building construction types, how do we look at all of that so that the risk of disaster reduces? These days, many builders, they claim that our property is earthquake resistant. So, will CDRI roll out some guidelines for the benefit of uh, the common man? Please tell us that is there any standardization procedure, any coding which CDRI is planning to map so that people can are aware when they are about to buy the property? Codes and standards are important. Codes and standards sometimes are not universal because it all depends on different geographies, different locations, different institutional environments. Lastly, can you please brief about the global database that is being prepared by CDRI to track the risk to infrastructure at the national level? We've spent the last two years with global experts, some of the leading modelers in the world, to understand how infrastructure is at risk from at least six types of hazards. That is a database that we've built that is going to come out as a report in terms of findings and that model will be available for countries to use. The model helps to understand that transportation system, roads and railways, for example, are more at risk from earthquakes and not cyclones. It helps to understand that energy systems, electricity systems are more at risk from cyclones and maybe not other kinds of disasters. So we've actually mapped out all of the infrastructure in the world and try to understand what, how much risk are we carrying. And we've got a report that we're going to be launching in the next month and a half, which provides, you know, the narrative around the findings, which can then help decision makers understand, you know, why they have to look at strengthening infrastructure today and not wait for losses that happen tomorrow. I would like to quote Prime Minister as I end the program. The pandemic has reminded us no one is safe until everyone is safe. We have to ensure that we leave no community, no place, no ecosystem and no economy behind. This shows the global leadership which India is by taking the world together when we have to deal with the disasters. Thank you so much Mr. Prothi for joining us in the studio and sharing your thoughts. Thank you so much for having me. You were listening to an interview with Amit Prothi, Director General of Coalition for Disaster Resilient Infrastructure, CDRI.
The interviewer was Diksha Saxena, Akashvani correspondent. This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of Akashvani. You can listen to it on a mobile app, News on AIR. This program is also available on a YouTube channel, News on AIR Official. You may share your feedback about this program through email at airnsdtalks at gmail.com or WhatsApp on 9289094044.